Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news, a sealed indictment that has been handed down against former President Donald Trump in the grand jury investigation of his attempts to overturn the 2020 election. He has been charged with four counts, conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to impede the January 6th congressional proceeding, conspiracy against the right to vote and to have that vote counted, and obstruction of the certification of the electoral vote. Trump's campaign team released a statement just moments after the indictment was returned saying, quote, President Trump has always followed the law and the Constitution with advice from many highly accomplished attorneys. Today's indictment is the former president's second federal indictment, his third criminal indictment overall. It's expected he will be arraigned at the D.C. District Court on Thursday, August 3rd. So two days hence, we will have much more coming up tonight at 11 and, of course, NBC Nightly News directly following this newscast. Our other top story here on Local 4 News at 6, defense attorneys present more evidence in the Miller hearing for the Oxford High School shooter. Today's hearing was adjourned and will pick up back up on August 18th. Sean Lay has been following today's proceedings and Sean today a licensed psychologist testified about his meetings with the shooter. 20 hours or more that he met with the Oxford High School shooter, really doing a deep dive into his mental state. Big question he was asked, does the shooter have any remorse? Psychologist Dr. Colin King spent hours with the teen shooter after the shooting. His opinion, he suffered from deep depression, had no help from his parents, and was out of touch with reality. And was hoping school officials would catch him with a gun in his backpack to avert the shooting. King says the teen was crying out for help, but prosecutors say when it came down to it, the teen had chances to get help, but did not, and moved forward with his plans to shoot up Oxford High School. When the defendant has the backpack next to him in the counselor's office, the defendant had the perfect opportunity to get help, didn't he? Absolutely. All right, and he didn't take that, right? He didn't take that opportunity. Those are the facts of the case. Right. He'd asked for help many times, but when help is right there in front of him, he doesn't ask for help, does he? That is correct. Videos played in court today of the teen in crisis inside the Oakland County Jail. His lawyer making the case that life in prison without parole is not appropriate for a juvenile offender. Prosecutors say the teen was calculated, cold-blooded. The doctor believes, however, that he is sorry. And he's expressing extreme sorrow. Back here live. So this Miller hearing, day three now, Everyone wants answers. Everyone wants to dig into what happened and why. The same, we're getting some of those answers. Same time, so difficult to hear these answers, doing this deep dive into everything here. And the hearing, guys, still not over with. It's going to resume on August 18th. One more witness, and the judge will take all this information under advisement and make his ruling after that. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4, back to you. Such a difficult day for those families to hear all of this today. All right. Thank you, Sean. Truly. Police need your help tracking down 41-year-old Jonathan Andrew Gregory. He is accused of attacking two people with a machete and then taking off. It happened inside a homeless camp on North Main Street in Adrian. According to investigators, Gregory got into an argument with a man and woman staying in the camp, and at some point, things turned violent. If you see Gregory, you're asked to call police immediately. He is considered armed and dangerous. Five Macomb County communities under a boil water advisory after a massive water main break. Rob Maloney live in Chesterfield Township for us tonight. One of the areas affected by this big problem and obviously the water is being handed out. That's right. Uh, they have it right here and, and, and they have the box form 2.64 gallons or you can get bottled water here. A lot of this donated by Kroger and they're lining up behind me here trying to get their water. They're also doing this at Station 1 in Chesterfield Township, but other townships may be doing this as well. So if you're affected, you may want to do a check on that. But uh, here is exactly what happened this morning that brought all of this on. At 5 in the morning and you hear what you think is your sump pump going, there's comfort in that. It was deep concern, though, for Dave Armstrong discovering his front yard could have used a dozen of them. Just a big geyser is coming up about four feet and running through my yard. <laughs> So it, it ran all the way to 23 mile road. Work crews with heavy equipment descended on the drain next to his front lawn, first shutting down the valves on either side in order to stop the water from gushing, as we saw first thing this morning from drone four. And after clearing the water, they'll dig up the 36 inch main to find out why it failed. 
Gliwa CEO Suzanne Coffey spoke via Zoom with Local 4 this afternoon, saying it's inconvenient, but much smaller than last year's water main break near Port Huron. 150,000 people in that neighborhood. Um, so last year it was much, much larger, multiple communities and many, many more people. Some area restaurants closed. Others went into doing only what they can mode, skipping the salad tonight. We don't have the water cold enough to do the prep for the lettuce. So we're just doing a limited menu, but we're able to do the pizzas in the 450 degree oven. Lisa Oskin owns Chesterfield's Marco's Pizza, needs water to make dough. And considering just how busy she gets when people can't easily cook dinner, she needed help boiling water. Help came from next door and the neighbor, Twisted Street Barbecue. It's very inconvenient, yeah. I mean, but I mean, we're going to do the right thing. I mean, I could close my doors just like anybody else out there, but we want to be here for the community and, and help them. And she is very thankful for her neighbors for helping her out. In the meantime, here's the recommended recipe for everyone at home dealing with this. You boil the water for one minute, then you let it cool. And then you're going to want to use it for drinking, for making ice, for washing dishes, brushing teeth, and also preparing food. They hope. If they can get all the inspections done and make sure that all of the lines are clear, that this can be finished by Thursday afternoon. Reporting live in Chesterfield Township, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Well, so hope we're going to reach that Thursday deadline and get things fixed for those folks. We appreciate it. Thanks, Rod. We are working to find out what caused this house fire over on Marconi Street in Independence Charter Township. Sky 4 was overhead as fire crews scrambled to ex extinguish the flames earlier today. Don't know much about how that house was destroyed, but you can see the smoke and water damage definitely is going to be very significant. Former Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith pleads guilty to three felonies. Those crimes include official misconduct in office, tampering with evidence, and conspiracy to commit forgery in a virtual hearing. At today's hearing, Smith admitted to embezzling more than $600,000 while serving as Macomb County Prosecutor and using it to throw parties, buy gifts, and install a personal home security system. Smith will be sentenced September 6th. Also today, Shelby Township Clerk Stanley Grant has been sanctioned by the Michigan Association of Municipal Clerks, also removed from duty. Grant is accused of signing false certificates to favor Donald Trump in the 2020 election. The board said he violated their code of ethics and voted to censure him. He faces eight charges. He denies any wrongdoing. A Detroit man calls Help Me Hank after the city took action to remove dangerous lead service lines. But since the switch, water's been flowing into his home. Tonight, consumer investigator Hank Winchester live in Detroit getting some answers. Hank. Yeah, Devin, this all sounded good in the beginning, right? Action being taken to remove those dangerous lead lines. But then the big problem. That's why I made my way here to DWSD to find out what is really going on. These photos show some of the problem, water seeping inside. This after work was mainly done outside of the home, taking out those lead service lines, making sure that the water in this Detroit home would be safe. I'm losing money, I'm losing patience. Is it because why should I be like this? All right, let me take you downstairs and show you the problem here. This is the new copper pipe here in the home, but as you can see, there is a lot of water, dirt, debris. This all happening after the pipe was replaced down here. But ever since the project was completed last year, the water has been an ongoing problem. It just does not stop. A headache, a nightmare. I can't enjoy my basement. And because the water just keeps on coming. Yes, sir. So today I reached out to the top boss at DWSD, Gary Brown. Well, we think we had a seal, uh, probably a $3 seal that gave way and uh, leaked water into the home and, and did some damage. Many service lines, they've been replaced. There are few problems, but this one needs to be corrected. This yeah. is pretty rare, but it's still, it was a big problem for this yeah, person. Yeah, for that, for that person, or if it were your house or my house, it would be a huge problem. We understand that. I know you've had some frustration dealing with different city agencies, so that's why we went to DWSD today to kind of get it all sorted out. Thank you. So they're going to they're gonna take care of it. Thank you. You feel good about it now? I feel great. You feel better? <laughs> I feel better. We okay? I feel okay. better. <laughs> okay. We're <laughs> Yeah, we're all feeling a lot better, able to laugh now as DWSD is going to be there on Thursday to take care of this problem once and for all. You can understand just how frustrating it was. So, I mean, we're not talking about a completely flooded basement, but this has been going on now for almost a year and it needs to be corrected. 
We're live here downtown Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Local 4. You got it. All right, Hank. Well, a gorgeous uh, day. It was. Uh, it got a slightly cooler, a little more mm -hmm. comfortable. Are you sleeping with the windows open? Uh, yes. Yes, doing? indeed. Yes, it's been nice. very, very nice. I don't, we'll see how long we get to do that. No bugs you go think? in your ear. You have that screen <laughs> no, down. It's all been good so good, far. It's working for me. How you long know that's you... what I was going to ask. I knew you were, Kim. I saw you snickering over there. I'm so like, I'm going to get it before. those that don't know, Karen <laughs> sleeps outside sometimes, which I was totally against. Mm. Right. And then she got a bug in her ear. I stopped that. Sad. So even for though now. it's 62, Come Keep on, the window. Or get a tent. I mean, All right, I don't I'll know, work be on covered. That. <laughs> All right, we've got a nice night here. It's quiet. There was one little cell that just went through uh, just to the east of Essex and now it's down to the south. So everything is good on Exact Track 40 radar. Weather story for the next couple of days. We've got a slim chance of rain from now until Thursday, and I mean slim. Upper 80s by Thursday, and a rain chance uh, comes back to us a more significant rain for the beginning of next week. But until then, it's nice and quiet. It's also cool, 75 in Port Huron, 74 in Mount Clemens, 76 in Pontiac, and also in Ann Arbor, 79 at Metro, 78 down in Monroe. Let's talk about tomorrow because you will notice just a little bit more humidity. Winds start coming out of the southwest. Today they were there out of the northwest, so a little cooler and also pretty calm today. So those southwesterly winds will usher in just a little more humidity. Not too bad, still pleasant. Temperatures about a degree above our normal high, which is 83. We'll have partly cloudy skies tomorrow with a high of 84. Then we start to warm up for one day and then that's it. I'll have a look at your weekend forecast too coming up in a, just a couple minutes.